everybody. I'm Sue Ann Penna, joined by Eddie Malavarca and our guest today, Anthony Calandra of Gun for Hire. On the other side of the break, we were talking about how our politicians are happy to use any opportunity to um, come up with legislation against the law-abiding citizen for having a firearm. Well, and any mass shooting is Trayvon Martin. Game. Trayvon Martin was one, and then we talk about. Uh, uh, Gifford, rep, uh, uh, right. Representative Gifford, Gifford, when she was shot in Arizona. And the fact is, if there was law-abiding citizens on the scene that could have met that force with equal force, it would have negated itself. My biggest argument is always, uh, again, for us old-timers, the subway massacre with Colin Ferguson, where he yeah. took a gun out in a subway while it was moving, and he just started picking people mm -hmm. off. Wouldn't it have been nice if there was a retired cop or a law-abiding citizen in that train car that was carrying a gun that could have returned fire? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, Think seriously. Of how many deaths would have been prevented? What about allowing life, what about a, a law-abiding teachers to carry guns? Right. You know, schools, I love it, they put a sign up outside, this is a gun-free zone. That's beautiful. Thanks for the uh, that, Yeah, exactly. Right. Beautiful. So now, because a sign helps, because I'm going to follow that law. Oh, no guns well, allowed in do. here. <laughs> Correct. And, uh, you know, they know you, exactly you, where to go. Yeah, you, you put, put the one. sign up, you know, no, the gun-free <laughs> zone. I'm going in there now, and I'm going to shoot everybody up. So it's really dumb. And, of course, our politicians always look for those sound bites and sound clips. Exactly. You know, Schumer and the rest of them, gun control, gun control. These are people that have entourages of armed officers 24-7. Right. Again, it's the, it's the separate but equal you know, right. thing that we have. And it's a ruling class type of thing. Correct. Well, yeah. well, look, we have, we, with our health care and everything, the, the three branches, executive, legislative, and uh, uh, judicial, they don't fall under the same Social Security. They don't fall under the same health care. Uh, so, again, it's the, you know, if you go back to Animal Farm, you know, all animals are equal, but some are more equal, equal than right. others, okay? Mm -hmm. We have, like, uh, Diane Feinstein. She has a carry permit. She's anti-gun. You, you know, I, yes. yeah, I love that. <laughs> Some for thee, and every and every <laughs> but not for me. and every couple of years, you'll hear about a politician, a, a vehemently anti-gun politician whose house is broken into, and he shot at the intruder or something. And this is an anti-gun politician. Again, it's you can't have guns; right. you're the subjects. Mm -hmm. But us, the ruling class, we can have the guns. But they'll always jump on that. And uh, let's face it, there's not many mass shootings. And even if you were to ban law-abiding guns, people are still going to get illegal guns. Absolutely. We're st people will still want to know that they can protect their families if they had to. Not only them. I'm not saying that you know, legal citizens are now suddenly going to uh, you know, go, go and get illegal guns. But you know, criminals will always have them. Correct. And as long as there are guns in the world, we need law-abiding citizens to offset it. Listen, with all the police cutbacks right. and with, with, with everybody going after the police pensions and stuff, cops don't even want to do their jobs anymore. Right. right. They just want to come home, you know, and, and who can blame? They want to go to work and come home safe. But, you yeah, know, when you it. hire a guy and tell him he's going to get X, Y, Z, and then six years later you change his plan, you break, take all the wind out of his sail right. mm -hmm. or her sail. And then they're so understaffed. You know, all your major cities, you know, uh, Trenton, Camden, Newark, they all laid off 20, 30, 40. What Trenton was 50% of their police department right. they laid off. These guys are overworked. We have what I call it in New Jersey and many inner cities and states, we have a catch and release Mm -hmm. you know, system where we catch the criminals and release them the next day. Right. It's, it's horrible, you know, and the cops are, I talk to cops all the time, their spirit gets broken because uh, they, they break their backs risking going to prison by doing something wrong or getting sued. They arrest somebody and they're out the next day. We just, there's a, there was a guy. They uh, have to put their life on the line correct. for that. Correct. Patterson, there was a guy who committed a crime. He was out on his fourth bail. All right, he was out on four bails for four cases, committed a crime, and he got out the next day. He's out on five bails. You think he's going to get a job now? No, he's not going to get a job. Mm -hmm. He's going right back to his life of crime, right. and our cops are out there risking their lives. But they're not there to protect us. If someone's banging on your door at 3 o'clock in the morning or someone breaks into your house, the police are not obligated legally to protect you. Who is going to protect you? Mm. So you know, it, it, it's just such an awful message that our politicians are sending to us. It, and it's pretty much we don't care. They don't care. They don't really care about us. They Look at the way they don't represent us. They don't during the Fast and Furious exactly, vote. The, the, the Fast next. and Furious vote with Eric Holder when they held him in contempt. A hundred and four of our elected officials got up and walked out before the vote in silence, 
three of which were Democrats from New Jersey. These are elected officials that we voted in to represent us, and that's dereliction of their duties by turning around and walking out of the state of the, of the, of the Capitol and not voting. Well, right. they're supposed to vote for us, okay? As far as I'm, I'm concerned, that's treason and contempt Absolutely. by them doing that. Absolutely. But you know what? No one will do anything or say anything about it. Me, I lose sleep over it. Right. Absolutely. Right. And let's talk about how the government, I mean, Wait, people are talking about Fast and Furious, and the whole reason for it was to show, see, gun, oh, um, you know, gun shops are not responsible. They just sell to anybody. They end up on the other side of the border, and they're used against us, except that whole thing blew up in their face. Right. And uh, simultaneously, I mean, think about the other. We didn't even get to this last week, the Arizona decision that came down, right? So Arizona has to remain a sitting duck, according to the federal government. Correct. Right? The, 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 the case, the sitting duck example of all sitting duck examples. Yes. A, a state in the United States has to rely on the federal government to enforce immigration law. If it does do its job, the federal government has decided it's not going to help the state do its job. Correct. Exactly what is Arizona supposed to do? Their, their hands are tied. They've been hobbled by the federal government. At war, you have Arizona as a border state, which was one of the states that was used in Fast and Furious. Much different than Gunwalker. Everybody talks about it. Gunwalker under Bush was in cooperation with Mexico. But everybody knew about it. And the guns it. had RFID tags right. hidden in them for being traced. Fast and Furious, deep down, was set up by the current administration to prove that there was an iron highway of guns flowing to Mexico, and we need to increase the gun laws in the United States. That's what the whole thing was about. Mm -hmm. That's why we just had the executive privilege come out with the Obama administration. Let's call a spade a spade here and a heart a heart. Holder and Obama's plan was to increase bans on firearms for law-abiding citizens. And they started to put that catchphrase out early on in his, in his administration when they started talking about the southbound guns. We've got to stop the southbound guns. Yes, and the Iron Highway, they heads, called it. Right? right? And everybody was saying, oh, you know, where, what, what is this? Where did this come from all right, of a they're sudden? they're setting us up. And you can always tell when Pelosi's saying it and Hillary's saying it and Obama's saying it and all the Schumer's saying and, it, and we, it's a coordinated effort. No. And, and we have a dead Border Patrol agent right, which has who two Nancy of them, Pelosi actually. Yes. cannot remember his name and neither can Jay Carney. Nope. Ask them who, what the name is of that And that would be Brian Terry. Border Patrol agent. Brian Terry was dead, and two guns found on the scene were directly linked to Fast and Furious. CNN reported that they might be linked to Fast and Furious. A, a blatant lie, because the, the federal government linked those guns directly. It took NBC, uh, it took NBC one year to report on Fast and yeah, Furious. And I think maybe we got 30 second reporting on maybe. that. Maybe. So it took, it took one year to report on it, and I'll tell you what, they forced the dealers on the border states to did. sell the guns to the drug traffickers and the gun traffickers. They forced them to do it against the will. They pressed these guys. The ATF said, Eddie, you're selling them those illegal guns, or we're going to find something wrong in your paperwork and shut you down. Okay, they forced them, because some of them are coming forward now and talking sure. about it. But the government had no way of tracking the 2,000 guns, so that tells you right away it was a setup from the start. They just wanted the guns to get through. They collected the serial numbers, and they waited for the guns to be used in crimes in the U.S. and Mexico so that they could say it was because of the iron highway of gun trafficking, which is BS. And let's mm -hmm. think about all of the Mexicans that were killed at the hands of oh, those guns. We don't even know I mean, how do many. Probably thousands. Do they matter? I actually have a right? number. Just, not. <laughs> just on the other side of the border, I have this number, cool to know. 34,000 people have died in the last five years on the in, innocent people. border. 15,000 last year alone. That's just on the other side of the border. Exactly. So innocent that's, people were killed. Right. At the and hands that's of the ones this. they can account for. And, and President Obama takes out executive privilege. Executive privilege. And you know what? And they, what does that say? <laughs> that he was involved. Absolutely. It went right up to the top. There are internal memos saying that this was to increase gun control in the United States. He had told Sarah Brady that he was working on gun control items under the radar. And that is a perfect the example of under the radar. Government. Yes, that and was it. Uh, and no comment on that. <laughs> so but there it is perfect <laughs> under the radar. So this takes us to the, the small arms treaty then. Oh, right. We need right. about six hours to discuss that. This has been bouncing yeah, around for about that. ten <laughs> years. The UN Small Arms Treaty is going to be voted on, I think, July twenty seventh, right? Twenty seventh, yes. 
Oh, that's going to be a really big one uh, where we're actually going to relinquish control of our own country to the United Nations. That, which has been the uh, goal of this administration since day one, is that uh, the United States should not be a sovereign country any longer. What does this, what the, let's, let's think about what does this treaty actually say, you know, uh, for, for somebody just hearing this for the first time, exactly kind of what, right. what does it do, what does it accomplish, and who gets to vote on this? Well, the, ahead, the stated goal of the small arms